Hi there and welcome to the Frank Nutt Sewing Machines YouTube channel. My name's Lucy and we're here up in our um, PR room today. Um, but we are going to be looking at some bonnets. Um, so we've got the bonnet 38 here. Um, it's the big sister to the bonnet 37. We are going to be doing a little comparison video on these two. So we're going to get the bonnet 38 out of the box and give you a little tour around it. This is um, a digital, actually fully computerised machine. Um, with some great additional features for all your dressmaking and sewing needs. So let's get it out of the box and have a look at what's inside. So we have, oh, when they fall out, a um, little manual there, and um, the guarantee and also the stitch card information. This particular model does come with a um, hard case as well, so I'm just going to kind of lift that up and out. It does have a bit of polystyrene in there, which does need to be kind of kept in position, so do keep that bit there if you are unpacking. We've got power lead. Actually, I'll pop the hard case over here so you can see it. There we go. It's one of those ones that slips over the top and the handle pokes through. Um, bag of accessories and feet the extension table. So this is a table that slips around the machine. We'll take a look at how that goes on shortly. And then the machine itself. Oh. There we go. And the foot control hiding in the middle there. So we'll just pop that out. So, right, we'll get it set up and plugged in and then we'll give you a bit more of information about all of the features of this machine and stitch it off as well. So we've now just got the uh, B38, Bonnet 38, all set up here. And so um, we're just going to go through exactly what we're getting in our accessory pack and um, then how we operate the machine. Um, so in here, we've got everything we need to look after the machine, to run the machine, and also to use the different stitches because we've got additional feet and things as well. So I'll just go through it here. So um, spare pack of needles, including a twin needle. Um, we've got little brushes for cleaning and the needle threader, oh, sorry, needle threader, seam ripper that is. We're also getting our set of bobbins and there is one actually inside the bobbin case already. Um, a couple of different size spool caps. So we've got two large ones there and there is another small one. And then we do also have an additional small one which is actually on the machine already. We've got a spool net for keeping hold of those wayward little threads sometimes, very useful. Um, additional spool pin for doing using your twin needle screwdriver for taking off your needle plate for cleaning and um, you can also use this for the screw on the side too and also the um, needle screw and then feet wise we've got quite a few in here so we've got the button sewing on foot there put it the right way around and um, this one is our blind hemming foot we've got our zipper foot the over edge foot a satin stitch foot and an open toe satin stitch foot. You've then got your standard foot on the machine all ready to go and hiding in the front here, I hope, yes, there it is, is the automatic buttonhole foot as well. So um, quite a comprehensive set of feet included with this machine and um, obviously details of how to use all of those are in your manual. Um, so we'll pop those to one side for a moment and just have a look at how we get this threaded up and get going. Oh, I also forgot to mention, you get your booklet as well with um, all of your stitches in there, the stitch reference booklet. So all the different modes and stitches. So we'll just have a quick glance. We've got decoratives, we've got alphabets, European alphabets, <laughs> Cyrillic alphabet, and then also a really good little guide on threading the bobbin and using the needle threader and threading the machine itself. So that's a good little reference to have, but this is what we're going to show you now. Okay. There is also a little place to hide this as well, keep it safe in the front of the machine. Right, so I've got some thread here, so I'm just going to pop off the little spool cap that was originally on the machine and um, get this ready to actually get it set up for bobbin winding. Um, so I'll take the bobbin that's actually inside down here first. And we're going to take this up to our bobbin winder here and pop it onto the metal spindle. Then going to load the thread here and pop on the spool cap. Always use the most appropriate size spool cap for your thread. This one's perfect fit 
fits in there lovely. Then I'm going to follow the um, lines on here, the arrows, that are actually a dotted line instead of the solid line. The solid line is for threading the machine and the dotted line is for threading the bobbin. So we're through the tensioner and then we're going to take it around just to get this going, uh, the, around the bobbin to get it started and you can poke it through the hole um, as well to keep it safe but um, that's a bit fiddly and never works very well on camera so we're going to leave that there. Push it over the machine will actually know um, when you have pushed that over, it's got a sensor so it knows we're in the bobbin winding mode. And then we can use our start stop button um, here on the machine to actually get that going. Oh, or not. Sometimes that happens. I'm just going to hold the thread there to get it started. There we are. And so you can leave the um, bobbin to wind um, as much or as little as you like. You can stop it at any time or restart at any time. And you've also got your speed control here, so you can actually do it slower or faster. That will be enough for now. I'll stop that there. I'm just going to pull the bobbin, push it back over, lift it off the spindle. Ooh, we'll get rid of that little thread in a second. I've got a pair of scissors here, so let's just trim that off. I don't want that one causing any problems. And then we'll just trim this hit thread here. So loading the bobbin into the machine, we want it to be um, the thread coming off to the left hand side and then it literally drops into the bobbin case. And there is a little picture and obviously we do have that little reference as well of how to actually um, thread it into the tensioner because this is really important. So it's kind of at about six o'clock, we gently pull it in and you can feel that there is tension on that thread. And we'll just leave that there until we thread the rest of the machine and can bring up our bobbin thread. So then we will go to the top of the bonnet 38 and scoop it around the back. We're going to follow the solid line arrows this time. So coming down the front of the machine, underneath. I'm just going to use the um, needle up and down button here just to get the um, take up linked lever to appear so I can easily slot that in. And now I know that the needle is in the highest position which is going to be um, perfect for using the needle threader, which is built into this model. Down the front to the thread guide. And as I said, we've got a needle threader, so I'm just going to engage that here, and it should stay down in position. I'm going to go around this little arm, and so that the thread is flowing in the direction of that arrow. Then pop it up. Oh, this one doesn't seem to... Let's have a little look. There we go and it's made a little loop out the back there that you can then just pull through. Then we're gonna bring up the bobbin thread by using the needle up and down button. There it is. And I can pull both of those threads out the top, tuck them under into the back, and then pop on the bobbin cover. And we're ready to go. So we'll have a look at some of the other buttons on the machine here as well. Um, so we've got a little, a little tour, if you like. Needle up and down, which we have already used. We've also got built in the scissor functions. This is an automatic thread trimmer that will trim the threads on the top and the bottom whenever that is pressed. The twin needle button, which means that you can actually let it know that you're using a twin needle and therefore it won't let you do anything with the stitches that you shouldn't be doing that could hit the foot. So that's a really nice handy one to have on there as a little safety feature really. Your speed control, which we've already looked at when we we're winding the bobbin. And then down here, we've got a tying off and locking function, a standard reverse button, and the start stop. As we saw when we first opened the machine, um, the Bennett 38, you do get the foot control in the box. And um, obviously, most people would probably decide to use that, but for the purposes of this, we're going to be using the start stop button here. Um, but they both do the same thing and use the speed limiter here in order to operate. So that's like this, your maximum and your minimum, and you can change that as you're going as well. So uh, we're going to go through, so with, as we saw with the um, stitch reference chart, there are a few different modes on this machine. We'll just go do a bit of a running stitch just to show you how that works. Get a feel for the machine, get a feel for the sound. So I'll just pop it on a medium speed and we've got that um, uh, straight stitch selected, which you can see referenced here and then our length, width of stitch and our length of stitch. And they can then be adjusted using these ones here. So if I wanted to increase my stitch length a little bit, 
I can just use that, that button there. Start it off here. And there we are on a nice medium speed. Now if I wanted to do reverse, I can just use the reversing button. And if I wanted to lock the stitch, I would press the roundy target button and that will actually do the locking stitch instead. You don't need to reverse and locking. I'll just show you how the buttons work. The great thing now is that we can press our scissor function and it will trim the top and the bottom. So if we then raise the foot and pull the bit away, we can see we've got it all trimmed and neatly secured on the back. The machine is then ready to go. You don't need to necessarily pull the, um, I just did that automatically because I've got a much older machine at home. But uh, so you don't have to pull the thread um, to make sure it's a long tail at the back and your bobbin thread will just sit underneath there, but it will pick it up again straight away. So if you were to lower the foot again, we can choose a different stitch. We'll go for a zigzag. Again, the machine is automatically um, increased, well, the width now, is three and a half because we've actually got width to the stitch as opposed to just the needle position. And the length of stitch has been shortened to give us that zigzag. And then again, if I was just to use locking stitch, and the scissors. But the machine picked up the thread totally, very easily, automatically, no problems even though you can't see it. That's the point I'm trying to make, it is there. On this model, we have got memory functions, which means that we can combine stitches together and also um, combine lettering to do words. And so you can do labels, all sorts of fun things. So if you were to have a little look on here, it's because I can't remember all the numbers off by heart, um, alphabet mode. So I would select on our mode button here, and you can see they're all labeled here anyway down to mode four, which is the alphabet. And then just type in the number of the stitch that I'm looking for, of the, of the number, the letter that I'm looking for. So um, we could just do a simple hello. So we're gonna go for 18. And then if I press this memory button here, it's then gonna show me like a cursor for the next letter. So I'm then gonna go for a lowercase e, that's 41. Memory again, um, L, which is 48. Memory again. 48 again, because that's another L, and then the O, 51, a memory. And I can then use this memory function here with the arrows left and right, just to check that I've spelt my word correctly, so I can see my hello. And um, the maximum stitch width of this machine is seven millimeters, so that is what it has actually um, automated the lettering to be. So let's lower this, and then we can let it do its thing. So with this particular Burnett 38 model, it does mean that once you've done a word, it will automatically stop at the end. So we don't have to command it to actually finish. And it's already done a tying off, so I can just use my scissors to trim. And there we have our lettering. It's really cute. It is only seven millimeters high, but it works well for labels and things. Little personalizations here and there. Decorative stitching, um, you can also combine together, but it depends on how you want to do it in exactly the same way. You just literally select the, um, uh, the memory function when you're in the decorative stitching. So if we were to go to mode here and select our decorative number three, and then go to that memory, this is where we again get that cursor and we're able to add these together. So in that decorative now, just gonna do the solid heart, which is six, five and then press that memory. And then we're gonna do this six, seven, and then press memory again. And so this now has made a pattern of a solid heart and the open heart, which we can then stitch out. It is actually recommending that we change the foot. And because this is a satin stitch, I am going to swap it onto the satin stitch foot because this is gonna give us the best chance. This is saying to use foot F on here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, there is a little F on there. So I'm gonna swap this one out because I think it will, will give better stitching. It's just got a little bit more of a gap at the back for the um, satin stitch to fit through. So I'm going to clip that one on. 
and then we'll give this one a little try. So start button, and we've got this on a medium speed, so it should just take it through nice and easy. It's important when doing decorative stitch stitching where it is moving backwards and forwards to not push or pull the fabric, we're just guiding it through. And then we'll just show you kind of um, how to stop at the end of a complete pattern because your tying off button here that we used earlier can also be used to um, command the machine to stop at the end of a complete pattern. So when you're coming towards the um, end of wherever you need it to be, you can, uh, I'll just show it on this one, if I press this, that target button now, it's going to complete the pattern that I've done and then do the tie off. And then we can do our scissors. And it's done our little row of um, pattern stitching. So that's as much of a memory function as this machine, the Bennett 38 has, um, which I think for most needs is absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna pop that, actually we'll leave that out for a minute because we're just gonna have a quick look at the automatic buttonhole as well, which is a, um, a great feature on digital machines, obviously totally game changing for anybody who's doing dressmaking especially or own garment making because it just makes it so neat and looks professional and just much better than a four step buttonhole, really does on a mechanical machine. This is where digital machines I think really do excel. So the buttonhole foot itself is the biggest out of them all. Um, it does have another an R on it so if we were to select our buttonhole um, stitch which on the utility mode 2 here, if I go to mode 2 and then I select say 22, there we go, it's going to say to use the foot R which we've got here. So what we want to do is actually put a button in the back, we're very prepared here and have not got one obviously, <laughs> but you can, um, so in the back of the, the actual foot here, this is where you would place your button, squeeze the actual um, adjustment there so it fits the button nice and neatly, there is a bit of foam in there so it will stay in that little gap, and um, we'll then pop this foot on with your imaginary button in the back to actually um, show you how this works. So I'm just going to squeeze the trigger off the back to release that foot, that satin stitch foot that we've just used, and then place it onto here. I like lowering the foot down to clip them on. I think that's a really easy way to do it. And then going to bring down the buttonhole lever because this is another bit that's actually given a bit of information on our screen here. Um, about this lever that comes down to um, engage the buttonhole. This makes it all automatic as it measures that distance that we've made with our button. Pop our fabric under. I'll do it to the side here because it does go backwards first, I think. Lower that down. And the great thing is we can just let this do its thing again. So I'll just press the start button. As you can see, it stitches both of the sides of the buttonhole in the same direction, giving it a, um, a better chance of being neat, to be honest. But that does all depend on the stabilisation of your fabric, the type of fabric that you're using. We've just got a double layer of calico here, so it's fairly stable and straightforward and isn't going to ruck up too much. But because of the way that the um, sensors work, it's told the machine to complete the buttonhole for the size of the button, our imaginary button that we put in the back of the buttonhole foot. So these are some um, of the basic features of this machine and um, so it, there is obviously a lot more to it um, but we're just kind of going doing a bit of an overview, just pop this here, um, can do lots of quilting as well with the extension table that you actually get with the machine, I'll show you how that pops on, it's got um, additional legs for support and so this is a really great thing that it's coming with. I mean, you could, it's not just for quilting, you could use it for curtains, for um, dressmaking, heavier things like coats and stuff, where you will need, where you need a bit more support. But to fit that on, you slide off the accessory table, where you can then use your free arm. And then this just literally, legs pop up, and it slots over. Easy. 
And so now if we wanted to do anything free motion, because you can get loads of different feet for this machine, um, free motion feet, walking feet, quarter inch feet, things that aren't supplied with it necessarily, but as an additional accessories, there's loads of things available. So having this space here does work really, really well. Um, one thing I haven't actually just mentioned, there is a dial on the very top of the Bennett 38, which is a bit of um, an addition compared to the other models, and that is an, a pressure foot dial. It is automatically, when you get it out of the box, set to the highest foot pressure, but you may want to loosen that off if sewing lighter fabrics, so it's just a dial that works at the back there, and that's how much the um, foot is actually pressing down and grabbing the, the, the material onto the feed dogs. So that's a nice little handy thing to have if you are sewing more delicate materials too. So it really is a bit of an all-rounder. We've got loads coming with it um, to do all of the applications that are in your, all of the stitches that are available. Um, and yeah, so overall, we really love the Bonnet 38. It's kind of got the full works. Um, definitely check out our website for the latest prices on this machine. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's been informative for you. And um, maybe we'll see you in store soon. Bye for now.